Hello, welcome to Spotlight, basking in the warmth of an artistic summer. Spotlight, brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. This evening, we're harnessing our inner rainbow ahead of this year's Pride Festival as we talk to Fenella Beach and Nona Binary, aka Owen and Ash. Another poem from our youth bard. And a bit of this classic show. When I grow up, I will be tall enough to reach the branches. Taking to a stage near you this very day. You get to climb when you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will be smart enough to answer all the questions that you need to know the answers to before you're grown up. So have you grown up? I've been working on it for almost 60 years now without a great deal of success, it must be said. But someone who remains forever young in a classic show of the same name is, of course, Matilda. If you've never seen the show, well, now is your chance. A production of the wonderful Tim Minchin musical show of the classic book by Roald Dahl. Open today, it's being performed by All Island Theatre at the Studio Theatre in Balagamain. I'm Ari Wilson and I'm playing Miss Trunchbull. Hello, I'm Amish Kilgallen and I'm playing Matilda. Hi, I'm Emma Hill and I'm also playing Matilda. Hi, I'm Libby Landles and I am directing Matilda. Guess what? We're talking about Matilda. <laughs> Top marks if you've got that one already. <laughs> right, it is a very well-known show. Tell us a little bit more about it then, Olivia, because it's. Uh, I think everyone will have heard of the show. Is this a, a straight version of the show that people will know or a variation on it or what have we got? Well, basically, the story is uh, is based on the Roald Dahl book, which is very famous. Um, and then it was made into a musical by uh, the comedian Tim Minchin uh, about 12 years ago. And it, it's got... It bears some resemblance to the story, as in we've got little Matilda, um, who's a very special little girl with mean parents at home, but it's been made into more of a comical take um, on it. Lots of musical numbers, lots of numbers that will go, you'll go home with them ringing in your ears. Oh, yes. Uh, (laughs) Earworms. Revolting Children being one. That's one of the biggest numbers of the show. Um, and then some lovely solos that the Matildas get to sing, Naughty and uh, Quiet. So, revolting children. How many revolting children? Are there lots of revolting children in Ailish, you think? Well, I don't really know. It's <laughs> kind of like they're just... They're not saying that they actually are revolting children. They're just trying to get the trunch ball really annoyed. Ah, but you as Matilda are not... A revolting child. You are one of the sweet ones. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you good throughout? Then you, you're one of the goody goodies. Mm, I think so. Yeah. And so, what about the singing numbers? Have you got any favourites you actually like singing? Because you get to go, do some of the good numbers. I think. Well, I like to do quiet and naughty's fun as well, but there are a few that we don't get to do. Okay. And Emma. Uh, what about you? Is there any particular numbers you really like doing? Well, my favourite solo would probably have to be Quiet because it's got like, so much meaning behind it. But my favourite group number, or one of my favourites, would probably have to be Revolting Children, obviously. <laughs> or maybe School Song, which like is when all the newer students are coming into the school and the bigger kids are trying to scare them off. <laughs> Now, you're both playing Matilda. Now, obviously not on the same night, so uh, do you take it in turns, or how does that work? Well, um, one of us would do a matinee on the yeah. day, and one would do the evening. Oh, splendid. And are you think, do you think, Ailish, do you think you're very different to Emma's Matilda and vice versa? Or do you think you play mm. Matilda very differently? Well, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's not totally different. So we do different ideas, 
and then when we we can watch each other which means we can take ideas and we can use them ideas but it still wouldn't be exactly the same and then what do you think do you, do you actually like watching each other play the same character yes i do like watching each other actually because like Hailish was saying you get to the um, I can't think of the word <laughs> you get to see how they do it and use perks of how they did it in your own show and vice versa so terrific so you can use each other's ideas and you yeah. can complement yeah. each other which is great now that sitting next to you we have the baddie of the whole piece <laughs> <laughs> now you know i've always i've always thought playing the baddie can sometimes be the most fun is it yes definitely without a doubt it's an absolutely fantastic character to play just screaming at kids all day <laughs> it's just fun <laughs> So tell us a bit more about Miss Trunchbull then. What's she like and who is she exactly? So she is the head teacher of the school which the Matildas go to and she has a deep hatred of children. She's full of her own self-importance and used to throw the hammer for the Olympics. <laughs> 1969. 1969? Yeah. Oh gosh, almost before my time that. So she, she, she's a woman to be reckoned with then. Yes, definitely. <laughs> one, one way or another. And I'm told you do a particularly good voice. Can, can you give us a sample, then, a, a little bit of sample of Miss Trunchbull without, without clearing all our <laughs> eardrums? Just give me a second to get in the zone. <laughs> Matilda Wormwood, where is... Oh, terrific stuff, terrific stuff. Uh, now then, what about the... Um, the rest of the cast then, because obviously we've got the two Matildas here, we've got Miss Trunchbull, who else? There's a whole cast of others as well? Yeah, we've got um, a cast of nearly 60 children. Um, started off with 62, but we think Miss Trunchbull scared a couple of them off. Um, <laughs> so all local um, performers, all under the age of 18. Wow, that's terrific. And now I've got a note down in front of me here as well. It says Matilda has, uh, she's uh, got lots of wit, lots mm -hmm. of intelligence... And yeah. special powers. Yeah. yeah. What special powers have you got? Telekinesis. Oh. <laughs> okay, now you're going to have to explain what that is. So basically, she can move stuff with her mind, but only at will, of course. Um, if you've watched the movie, yeah. she normally does it by like getting her dad to shout at her. And with all these emotions, all this anger within her, she somehow gets to move these objects <laughs> have you tried it have you tried it telekinesis i tried it once trying to get a match to move in a box but i couldn't do it <laughs> <laughs> well i have tried it sometimes i just feel like i want to try sometimes yep. i feel like i can do it yeah i know that i can't but i just want to try <laughs> no. sometimes. I, I tried yes either a match or just having a, like a paper clip and see if i can tip it off the edge of the desk but i've never i've never succeeded either has miss tunchable got any special powers other than shouting mm. uh special powers Shouting, screaming at kids, throwing a hammer and children really far. <laughs> do, you to, do you get to throw a hammer? Uh, not a hammer, but I do get to throw a child. So. <laughs> <laughs> no children were hurt, honestly, in, the, in this production, it has to be said. So what happens in the end then? Is there a, is it, are we giving anything away? We say whether there's a happy ending or not? I think we're allowed to say that there's definitely a happy ending. Uh, in fact... Even uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood end up quite happy in the end. Oh, and what about Miss Trunchbull? Does she get her comeuppance? Definitely not. She's terrified mm. by the end of it. She's <laughs> yeah. terrified of the strange abilities of the Matildas. <laughs> yeah, she basically just runs away. Well, she, she, she <laughs> believes she's haunted, them. doesn't she, by yeah, the end? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if I had to ask you what you've enjoyed most about playing in Matilda? Let's start with uh, you, Emma. I don't know, honestly. It's just been like a very, it's very thrilling to play her in front of all these people. And at first you might think it is a bit scary, but on the way you learn all these different things about how to play her and you meet all these other great people, like friends and different people who could inspire you in the future. Marvellous. And Ailish, for you? Sorry, I forgot. What was the question again? So what, what have you enjoyed? No, what have you enjoyed most about playing Matilda or playing doing this doing this play? Well, I I really enjoy watching the other team, mm -hmm. and I enjoy um, getting inspired. I I I enjoy playing with my friends, and 
I just enjoy doing all. I like doing all the acting. Mm-hmm. It's it's fun, but it's a big leap from when I last had a role in a different play. Wow! And last but by no means least, uh, I'd say all of it's been fun. I don't think I have any negative thoughts on it. And Miss Trunchbull's such a great character to play, and I don't think I'll ever play anything like it again. So <laughs> that's been fun to do. <laughs> and who would like to go on? Would, would you all like to go on and do more with music and drama? Yeah, yes. I would yeah, love yeah, to. definitely. Yeah. Right, all we need to know, times and dates and where people can go and how you can get tickets. Yes, so we have um, eight shows. We have a matinee each day at three o'clock and an evening performance at seven o'clock. The show's on at Balakameen Studio Theatre and you can go to the Studio Theatre website to book your tickets. It only remains to say to one and all, break a leg. Thank you. Not literally, obviously, unless you miss Trunchbull, in which case she's really yeah. she's a fan. Just because you find that life's not fair, it doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it. If you always take it on the chin and wear it, nothing will change. Even if you're little, you can do a lot, you mustn't let a little thing like little stop you. If you sit around and let them get on top, you might as well be saying you think that it's okay, and that's not right. A great night out, guaranteed. All the cast under 18, but can I say over-talented? Super-talented, as you might have gathered. There are eight shows in total. It's just started with matinees and evening shows each day. Those details again on the Studio Theatre website. That's the Studio Theatre, Studio Theatre, all on word, dot I-M. Spotlight, brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. Now, some poetry. You've barred Eva Petrova with her latest, and she's also looking forward to this weekend's Isle of Pride. Just the Perfect Choice is one of my many poems on the theme of not only nature, but love. With Pride being on the 13th of August, us poets have been preparing for an appearance with our most thoughtful pieces, and this is one of mine. I like to say this poem was inspired by a painting, which I have come across before. In the painting, there is depicted a peaceful river running into a forest, with beautiful lily pads floating upon its waters and a gentle bridge arching over the top. A bit of a shorter poem this time around, one which seemingly doesn't rhyme or stand for anything deeper, except that it does. I suppose it's better to see it written down, because the last word of each line combines at the end to form a hidden message, (laughs) which I will... Reveal at the end. Our place. Enticing waters shine here. You lean over the edge, almost toppling in, seeing your reflection before it can break the flowering water lilies drifting apart. It's calm and still, as if time itself can hold its breath. Reach out your delicate hands, stroking the velvety petals as they let loose on the flow and upstream they go. Birds chirping merrily all around, they sit on branches, perfect advocates of love, as whispering leaves unravel secrets to me. What lies beyond these glorious forests, they call their adventures, mysteries, their love, and the bridge's gentle arch supports me, to finding my correct window soul or not. The secret message, lean in, break apart, hold hands, let go. They love me, they love me not. Did you get the secret message? Very clever. All of Eva's work, of course, seems to deliver that little more than it might seem on face value. Now, sticking with Pride, and why wouldn't you? I caught up with drag queen Fenella Beach, a.k.a. the Manx Bard, a.k.a. Owen Atkinson, and the wonderfully named Nona Binary, a.k.a. Ashton Gibson, to hear more about a few changes to Fenella's popular drag shows here on the island, and a little bit about what they're up to at this year's Pride event. 
So um, as of um, a couple of weeks ago, we moved. I moved my uh, Thursday night shows to um, Moonlight, which is um, a newish venue um, uh, on the prom um, in Douglas, um, which is very exciting because um, yeah, it's always always nice to um, to switch it up, and um, the the venue is really good. There's a nice performance space. We've still got the um, the viewing party, and then we've got a little bit of a longer show afterwards as well, um, getting more guests in, and um, yeah, just just bringing bringing the weekly drag to the Isle of Man, keeping it going. <laughs> And what do you think of the drag scene? Do you think it's still vibrant on the Isle of Man and growing? Absolutely. I think it's never been more vibrant than it is now. And I think that, especially with Thursday nights and the fact that we're cultivating them more and more and more, it's just getting bigger and better as well. Yeah. And do you get new queens? I mean, are there some new queens coming along? Do you sort of get new queens coming every sort of, you know, every other show? Or I mean, I don't, I'm just wondering how it sort of develops that scene as sort of new queens come along and start start their stuff. Yes, so um, it seems like that we're getting um, yeah all the time. It's it's growing a lot of a lot of the time. It's people that come to the show and they see it and they think this is this is fun. This is exciting. Maybe I could be a part of this. You know, um, often people who want to start drag are already massive fans of drag anyway. They come to all the shows. They they see the the, the people on stage and they think, oh, that looks like fun. Maybe I could take part. Um, and and we just grow and grow. And how did you start? You come up with Nona, Nona Binary, was that right? Yeah, yes. that's a great name. How did you come up with <laughs> the name you. first off? Uh, the name is because I'm a non-binary person myself and I just thought that the pun worked really well. <laughs> and I started doing drag because I came to Thursday nights a really long time ago now. I've been doing drag for over a year. And honestly, I'd never, even though I've been a huge fan of drag myself, I never would have considered doing it in the first place if it wasn't for Thursday nights and for Fenella asking me if I wanted to do it. <laughs> and you find it sort of liberating or how do you actually find performing? Absolutely. I think it's... It's it's really freeing, and I think it's such a like great expression of like queer joy as well, and it's such an important art form, I think. And I'm glad to see more of it on the island. Yeah, because it, it always, always seems to be developing. Every time we talk, there always seems to be something new going on, something sort of vibrant going on. Do people, do you think they sort of grow into sort of coming into something like drag, or do you think it's there all the time and just, it just needs that sort of nudge, as you say, to, to meet someone else who's already performing, to think, you know what, I think I could uh, get into that? Yeah, I think it, it's kind of... Drag is so expansive, right? It's so um, it's such a broad term, and it can mean so many different things to so many people. So I think that kind of that desire to express and experiment and perform and all of that is is within so many people, and also within so many queer people as well. Because um, kind of, I guess historically, obviously things like are getting better, but it's still not um, a completely equal and safe society for all queer people. Um, anywhere in the world, including the Isle of Man. Um, and so that kind of um, drag being a, a place of, of, um, of self-expression and of fun and, as yeah, as Ash said, of, of, of queer joy, um, a lot of us have that, have that, have that, that capacity for, yeah, for performance, for expression, for, um, for all of that um, within us. And sometimes um, you just need a show to let it out. <laughs> Absolutely. And where do you think we, you are now with acceptance? Because as you say, after many years of what always seemed to be rejection of, of anything which wasn't the norm, whatever the norm is, whatever the norm is, uh-huh. now there seems to be a widespread acceptance of anyone and everyone, which is the way it should be. Are, uh, are we still getting there? You think there's still a long way to go? Or, or where do you feel we are now? Um, there is... Um... There's a song in Hairspray with the line, it's like, we've come so far, but we've got so far to go. Um, and that refers to the civil rights movement in the US, but I think it, it's also relevant here. Like, we've made a lot of progress, um, but there is also a lot of progress to be made. Like, there's still not... Um, I think specifically for trans people as well, there's not a, like, um, a lot of trans people still don't feel safe walking down the street, especially on their own, especially at night over here. Um, and kind of, there is people there's a lot of ignorance there's a lot of hate there's a lot of love and there's a lot of acceptance and a lot, there's a lot of joy as well but um yeah we we, we still have, do have um a lot of a lot of progress to be made which is why things like pride coming up mm. um this weekend are so important absolutely and where do you think where, where do you think we are at the moment Ash, on that i think that yeah definitely we've we've come a long way but i don't think it's a journey that will ever be really finished i think that we should always work harder to be as like as accepting as we can be do you know what i mean yeah absolutely uh, another quick question i think for you i know i've asked owen before how much of ash is in nona and vice versa are they oh. completely different characters or <laughs> no i wouldn't say completely different at all i don't usually love using the term alter ego for myself within my drag because it is kind of just me but like turned up to 11 and yeah i think i see a lot of myself in it but also 
there are things I do on stage that I would not want to do in my regular life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have got some pr- outfits I wear maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we have got pride coming up on the uh, 13th. Both involved, I take it. Yes, absolutely. Heavily involved. <laughs> and can you give us a, a Muslim that haven't seen exactly what's coming up? What's actually happening this year? Is it sort of bigger and better? How are we going for Pride this year? So much is happening. <laughs> so much is happening. It's, it's hard to keep up. Um, we will both be busy all day mm-hmm. um, because the parade starts at 11. Um, I think from the sea terminal moving down towards um, the villa. So they're having the um, the kind of the, the daytime um festival I guess as it were um, at the Villa, Villa Marina Garden same same place as last year um, so yeah there's a parade from 11 and we'll be on a float which Yay. is very exciting <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, we'll be on stage I, Vida is opening the, sh- opening the kind of the, the show and then there's going to be bands on all day and then um, there's a, a big group of us um, queens on in the uh, queens and king on in the afternoon and then again in the evening so there's just yeah, it's lots, lots, yeah, lots. The happening. biggest lineup that like local drag on the Isle of Man has seen, I think. Yeah, there's going to be yeah. nine of us, mm-hmm. which I didn't even realise till we got all, got ourselves together that there were nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and all, all performing together or, or separate, or how's that working? Um, so I'm kind of um, I've I've been curating the the, the show time. It's, uh, it's basically going to be um, everyone gets solo time and everyone gets group numbers. So there's going to be at least two or three mm-hmm. numbers where everybody is on stage at the same time. And then maybe half of the rest of the show is um, different, you know, pairs, uh, groups, um, and then, yeah, and then solos. So it's, it's just kind of a mix of, of everything. And we've seen there's the uh, Pride Choir as well, of course. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Um, yeah, and there's, 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 the, yeah, there's the, the Rainbow Choir, there's um, bands going to be on all day. There's going to be some poetry, I think, as well, which I'll be taking part in. Um, a family library tent, too. Yes, oh. yes of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we're going to be reading some books to children in full drag in the family library tent during the day so it's going to be great yeah a little drag story time which will be fabulous that's going to be going on all, um, all afternoon will be um that's the, the two of us and um vida and then um vincent finery the island drag king as well all going to be doing that so yes as i said busy all day <laughs> it is a busy all day just to remind us again it is the 13th so if people want to go along and get involved uh how do they do that do you just pitch up or yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's free entry, um, free access um, to everybody. Um, the parade starts at eleven, and then the kind of the day's um, festivities start at twelve. It's all at the Villa Gardens. Um, all the details about um, specific um, timings for everything will be on the Isle of Pride um, social media. Terrific. Looking forward to it. It's going to be great. It's going to be so good. Yeah. <laughs> little of the rainbow choir from last year's pride event pride 22 on this very weekend in glorious sunshine so the only rainbows you won't see are real ones it's a joyous and colorful celebration of life be there as they say or be square that's about it don't forget if you want to hear anything again Go to manxradio.com, download the Spotlight podcast, listen at your leisure, in bed, in the bath, up a tree, wherever. We're looking forward to LitFest next week. Drop me a line, any artistic thoughts or ideas as always. Stay creative, and I'll see you then. Cheerio. Colors. Just gorgeous. So-